lucky enough to have lots of different mentors over time. Uh, and I do think that it's important, you know, I've always been really lucky to work for people who believed in me. And I think that's really important. Uh, when you're looking at a job, it's easy if you're an entrepreneur because then you're working for yourself and obviously you hopefully believe in yourself. <laughs> but if you're working for someone else, then you should be wondering whether or not they believe in you. Because if they believe in you, they'll invest in you, they'll give you responsibilities, you'll learn and you'll grow. And if, if you're working for someone who doesn't believe in you, pretty much nothing good will happen. It may feel like good things will happen in the very short term, but nothing will happen. good will happen over the long term. Uh, the mentor I would highlight is a professor at Stanford, Eric Roberts. Uh, and for those of you who will go on to take programming courses, the people who learn to program in C, uh, he wrote pretty much the canonical programming book uh, for both the first and second courses in programming in C that are taught all across the country. Uh, and what happened was Eric has a special, uh, a special system in his classes where he offers three contests where it's beyond, above and beyond the current assignment. You, have to program, you may have to program for 40, 50, 60 hours to get your entry done. But if you win one of the contests, you get an automatic A plus on the final. <laughs> and so I was like, okay, I'm all in. I'm just not going to sleep. I'll get all my other work done, and I'm going to get that A plus on, a fi on the final. And the contest came, and it was the graphics contest, and I made a screensaver. Many of you probably don't even know what a screensaver is. <laughs> I made a screensaver, and like, it was this great idea, and I had four, and I could switch between four different screensavers uh, in the graphics competition, and I didn't win, but I was the runner-up. And actually, I would think that in now in retrospect, the runner-up is a much better thing to be, because if I had won, I wouldn't have had to have studied for the final. But as the runner-up, I had to take the final, so I had to do all that prep, but I got to go to the winner's dinner at Eric's house. So he invited the three winners and the three runners up to his house. And when I was at dinner at his house, he said, you know, you're really good at this. He's like, you should keep going in this. And he's like, and there's a possibility that you could go on to teach and be a section leader. And he's like, and I really, I really think you could go far in this. You've got a really good grasp of the material. And that word of encouragement caused me to go on to be a section leader where I started off teaching eight people at a time and then I became a head TA with a staff of 40 people who were each teaching eight people at a time. And then I went on to be a lecturer both while I was at Stanford. And for my first few years at Google, I kept sneaking back in the mornings and teaching classes uh, at Stanford. And so I end, and ultimately have taught about 3,000 people the program. Um, and Eric was really, that wouldn't really happen without Eric. And Eric is also the person who in part brought me to Google because after my summer in Switzerland, I came back. Eric asked me a little bit um, about what I had done and I told him, and he said, you know, there's these guys, two guys on the fourth floor, they're doing kind of what you're doing. You're looking at where people go on the web, they're looking at the link structure of the web. They started this company, it's a search engine, I can't remember the name. <laughs> I still give Eric a really hard time that he couldn't remember the name. And I said, you know, Eric, I just got back in the country, I'm really busy right now, I don't think I can mess around with a startup. And it turned out it was actually good because if I had gone to them, then they had started the company about two weeks prior and they wouldn't have been ready to hire me for another eight months, and it wasn't until the spring when I got an email from them saying, we heard you're graduating, we heard we should be talking to you. And I said, wait, I think this is that company, that company that Eric <laughs> told me about. In terms of mentoring or, or people who've coached me, um, and they vary, I think there sometimes are people that I've worked with, uh, sometimes they're my peers that I feel comfortable sharing with. I think what is the most important thing is to find someone who you can be completely transparent. And I think, uh, no matter how much we say we have to be authentic, when we are working, we're not. You know, all of us, whether it's men or women, have a shield that we wear. Um, and I think the more power you have, the more, uh, the thicker the shield is supposed to be, right? You know, by definition, you can't be emotional. You have to know all the answers. Uh, and those are all myths. And so I think it's actually finding someone who you can truly be uh, yourself. I think it's been people that have advised me or actually made me see something that was a blind spot for me. Um, and somebody said, you're very insightful, you know, I can read people really well. I didn't know that, you know, I think sometimes you don't realize your own strengths. Um, it's finding those kinds of people that I think have helped me in my career. I've had two really kind of important mentors and they were both actually men. Um, one of them was actually a boss of mine and I remember I was going through something in my life and I was trying to figure out how am I gonna, am I really gonna do this and I have kids and this is not gonna work and I'm never gonna sleep and um, one thing that he said to me was to stop thinking about it and just do it and I was spending way too much time thinking about how I was going to do things instead of just, just doing it. Um, and so I've kind of carried that with me, you know, throughout my life. Um, 
another person who has been really important to me is a friend of mine. Um, and this was, I was working at IAC and then I had gotten laid off and was trying to figure out um, what I was going to do. And I had this site called Black Web 2.0 and I was really, really passionate about it. Didn't feel like work at all. Um, and he mentored me in a very weird kind of way meaning he didn't really he wasn't really an outward mentor but he really just talked to me honestly about how I how things could work and um, you know I had a choice because I had children that I had to take care of if I was actually going to go get another job and be very nice and comfortable and cozy or if I was going to try to be an entrepreneur and, and pursue this passion that I had and um, and I chose you know the latter um, but what he would do was really just uh, brainstorm and talk talk with me like, well, you know, yes, that's a barrier, but why don't you think about it this way? You could actually do it this way and really just help me kind of brainstorm. So he was really just a support system for me. Um, and that, you know, job that I had at IAC was the last job that I had and I'm kind of here today. So um, I think having people that you can rely on from like a formal mentorship perspective, but also people who, you know, you can confide in and you can be very transparent with about your life, not just your work, like your life and things that are on your mind. Those are those are really important.